that kind of just feels that feels, feels natural good? or, or like right. that. Just, just oh, like, like this, yeah. like the one finger. I'm Hallie. This is Kygo. Are you ready to play some golf? I think so. All right. Let's so do it. Okay, let's do it. So the rules are really simple. It's a point for a fairway, point for a green, point for up and down, five points for a birdie, and a million points for a hole in one. Well, that's not going to happen. So what? Right. You don't know we'll that? Out. You can get a million <laughs> points. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> first. All right. Kygo, you're on the tee. Beautiful. Little fade. It's almost on the green. Great drive. It's not too bad. It's easy. It's not too bad. That's uh, good. Okay, still, nice. I mean, you outdrove wow. me by like 50 yards, so like we're next going to. with yours. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, right? When I was in college, I wanted to be a DJ. And I was like, you know what? It can't be that hard. <laughs> and then I looked at some turntables and I was like, oh my goodness, where do I even start? And I feel like that's a very similar experience for people when they get into golf because they see the pros and they're like, it can't yeah. be that hard. And then you hold the club and it's really intimidating and, and it's difficult. So I wanna know what was your onboarding experience like for golf? When did you start and what did you think? Well, I started during COVID because I had a lot of spare time. Yeah. Um, and there's actually this tournament in my local club, which is pretty fun. We like, you drink, it's like a scramble tournament. And after that tournament, I was just hooked. I was like, this is this is the best. Like, if it's nice weather, like just walking around with like some friends, having a couple of beers, playing golf is just the best. The season's pretty short in Norway. Mm -hmm. So I, I haven't played that much this winter. And then I was in Mexico in December and we played uh, in Cabo. We played golf and I played the worst round of my life. Like like it worse happened. worse than the first time I ever like really? ever played golf. Really? I mean that's happened though. Golf is go, golf I almost is up like, and down. I, I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit. I was like I'm I'm done golfing. I'm done golfing. That <laughs> is a universal experience for all golfers. But hey, you're back. You're out here. Now I'm back. Now I'm back. <laughs> no, but it, it is the best sport, but it's definitely frustrating and it's very humbling to be out on a golf course. Very very humbling. And you obviously have an insanely busy schedule. Where does golf fall in there for you? It's my third round of the week, what? so I, I, gotta, <laughs> I, can, I can fit it in there. You're fitting it in. You're making it a priority. That's awesome. When it does come to golf, you know, people can watch YouTube videos, they can read Golf Digest, they can, you know, go get lessons. But what is the learning curve for someone trying to get into DJing, yours specifically? Like, how do you, how do you get better and, and improve? Well, the way I started when I started producing music was just using YouTube. YouTube, okay. YouTube to tutorials. So I feel like there's so much stuff out there. And I actually, I did like, there's some like, you know, classes you can take. Uh -huh. I did an online class uh, for people that wanted to like get into producing. It's definitely like, you gotta, you gotta be patient there as well. There's, right. there's a lot of stuff to learn if you wanna get into producing music. Okay, so my next attempt, I will take your online class. Do and it. And hopefully have a better, a better <laughs> go around this time. You know what? Even though you didn't hit the fairway, I'm going to give you a point for a fairway because that was a great drive. Thank you. So it's 1 1 right now. Nice. Wow. Okay, I will okay. take that. That was a lot better than I thought I, I was going to do. This. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. All right, you've got it. I'm gonna blame the club already because I already like I only have a pitch. Oh, oh, we only have a pitching wedge. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. Okay. Wow, you're gonna get super creative <laughs> here. Yeah. That's pretty good with the pitching wedge though. So. Oh. That's okay. I mean, that hard. was really hard. <laughs> we won't. That's not your fault. What do you see in here? I have no clue. I was trying to read these greens the other day. I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Very nice. I'll give that to you. Thank you. There you go. All right, I'll take it. That was lucky. Nice. Score is 6-1 because I made a birdie out of the blue. I don't know how that happened. That was pretty good. But you know what? We're going to tie it up because I feel like your look here right now, you've got the Palm Tree Crew Palm Tree on your shirt. You've got it tattooed. You've got <laughs> your, this is your event. We're going to tie it up because that birdie was very unexpected. So it's 6-6, six, six, but I'll go first. I'll go first. Go Just first. How about that? Wow. Go. 
All right. Beautiful. I'll take it. Thank you. Nice. Well struck. Get up there. Hutton. A little left. That's okay. So we're in Miami Beach, home of the Ultra Music Festival, one of the biggest in the world. But you know, you're really young, but you're kind of a vet at this point. Like this isn't your first <laughs> rodeo. So does performing for tens of thousands of people, does it ever get kind of like, eh? Or is it, you, you still get a lot of adrenaline from it? I definitely get adrenaline. I get, uh, I always get nervous right before I go on stage. Really? But uh, I kind of like that. Cause like if, you know, nervous is just, it's a good thing. You just get, you get focused, you get right. like in the zone. So I always, I always feel the nerves and adrenaline when I hear the crowd and I'm about to go on stage. Yeah. So, you know, golfers generally, they have these long pre round warm ups with their stretching and they're hitting balls. And do you have like a pre show warm up at all? Or, pre I, or I know, don't really, um, I just kind of like to get at least like three, four minutes, like before my show to kind of not have too many people around because mm -hmm. there's always like a lot of people if i have my family in town they're all like want to you know they're, they're drinking having a good time right. but i want to kind of like focus on right so I, I usually like clear out my green room so i get a, a couple minutes like right before my show to kind of focus and get centered and yeah so when you do go out there and i'm assuming you have like a plan or a set list and do you always stick with that or do you ever like pivot when you're on stage i can switch it up a little bit but mm -hmm. For like big festival like oh, ultra like mm -hmm. there's a lot it's a big team involved it's like there's right. visuals there's lights there's pyro there's, there's a lot of stuff around so you can't just go off script and so be like, I, You're I, going can, with I, I, I can but they would be pissed off <laughs> okay fair we definitely have planned a set list ahead like this is this is songs are going to play i'm going to play this one after this one so right it's kind of for big festivals I definitely usually stick to my set list. Right. But if it's like a club show, I can do whatever. You I can want. do whatever. Yeah. That's cool. What would you say is the Masters Tournament of Festivals? Like if you were invited to headline at this festival, you have made it as a DJ. Well, that's, I think as an artist, I feel, I feel like Coachella is probably one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. If you headline Coachella, you're definitely on top of the game. Okay. Is there any um, venue or festival that you haven't played that you would like to? Uh, well, that's a good question. There's definitely some like nice venues, but I feel like now I've definitely played all the festivals that I was dreaming about playing when I was younger. I've played, I've played them. So I feel like now I kind of just want to go back to, you know, I played uh, Lollapalooza, South America. It's like the sickest crowd in the world down there. So I definitely want to go back down there to play right. Lollapalooza. And I'm sure some good golf courses in South America as definitely, well. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> What's a golf course that's on your bucket list that you that you haven't played just yet? I feel like Pebble Beach or something. Ooh, that would yeah. be, uh, that would be fun. That would be Probably awesome. a tough one, but. Yeah. We'll do, we'll do closest, closest for a point. Break. Oh. oh. Good speed. Just I thought it was gonna move. break way more. Yeah. I know, you can get that, get inside that for sure. It's too Get soft. down there. Too soft. Oh, is that gonna? That's gonna be good if it goes. Oh, uh, so good. Nice spot. That was awesome. Thank you. Good speed. Yeah. Well, never a doubt. All right, tap that in. Wow. Well, let's. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> nice. Far. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. All right, one more uh. home stretch. It is 7-7. Seven, seven. You ready? Last hole? I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. Your honor. Get over that bunker. Perfect. Fine. Nice. That road is very intimidating. So I know your buddy's with Ricky Fowler. I've seen you at some of his PJ Tour events. I've seen him in the DJ booth with you. So I have to ask, is he a better or worse DJ than you are golfer? The, <laughs> I've actually never really, really seen him DJ, but uh, we're probably pretty even to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I'm a pretty bad golfer. No. I, I think he would, 
He would probably be a fine DJ though. You think DJ Rick? DJ little... DJ is definitely way easier than golfing. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I, <laughs> a little Kygo collab with DJ Rick. I could see it. That'll be fun. That'll yeah. be fun. Ricky has had a very long relationship with Puma and your company, Palm Tree Crew. You guys have collabed um, over the last few years, most recently on the Palm Tree Crew Invitational and the new line of apparel and accessories and driver and putter. Can you talk a little bit about um, how that came to be in that relationship? Well, it was kind of like through Ricky, you know, cause uh, he came out to one of my shows in the Beast uh, like four, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And then we just like kind of became friends and then we talked about, obviously, I'm like super hooked on golf. My manager is very hooked on golf. So we talked about like, yeah. Hey, your we, manager we, lives like across the street. Yeah, he lives at the seventh <laughs> hole. You can, if you slice your drive, you're gonna hit his house. <laughs> <laughs> so we just like, we kind of just like want to be in the, in the golf world. And then we talked to uh, Ricky, obviously has a deal with Puma. We just talked about doing something fun, you know, with golf clothing, getting some palm trees in the yeah. golf clothing. So, and Puma really liked the idea, so. You know, it kind of just happened very organically. Yeah, that's awesome. And have you had the opportunity to play with Ricky? Has he given you any tips? Yeah, I played with him actually like three, four days ago uh, outside of Miami. And uh, I got some tips, but I feel like he's probably not going to like, my swing is so bad. So he's probably just like, hey, just uh, just play with your slice. <laughs> just like, just aim way left every time you drive. It's not, he's giving me some quick fixes. Quick fixes. All right. How far do you think? I say like. 73. What do you think? That's pretty good. I have a, I have a watch. Oh, so. you, darn it, you've got your watch. <laughs> <laughs> now I would think, yeah, probably around 75 maybe. Oh, 66. Wow. Get up there. Okay, unbelievable <laughs> with the pitching wedge. Not too bad. <laughs> so good. I don't even know if I can get, I have the correct <laughs> club. And I don't even know if I'm going to get inside that of that. That was luck. That was not <laughs> luck. That was pure skill. That's because Ricky taught you that shot. Ricky taught me that, yeah. <laughs> oh. Nice. Get up. Nice. Oh, see? It's good. It was okay. Golf is a very technical game, but there's a lot of different swings. You've got people like Jim Furyk and DJ with the closed wrists. And what I've noticed in DJs is that you guys all sort of react to beat drops differently like you've got the double hands you've got the fist bump and i find that you're you're kind of a fan of like the flick like the, yeah the flick. like the yeah so i gotta ask is this like what is the key to that is it like a solid forearm <laughs> is it a loose wrist like i don't know i it, i just do what feels natural just and comes that, natural that kind of just feels that feels, feels natural. good or, or right. like that this, this oh, like, like this, yeah. like the one finger? Okay, <laughs> perfect. I am I am so ready. I'm going to take your class. I'm going to get this down. I have to do a class on how, how to do this. Yes, yeah. do a class on that. <laughs> I'll take that one too. And it'll be great. Oh, hit it. Go, 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 go. I got scared. I'm going to tap it in and clear, clear the stage for you. Go for it. There you go. All right, I'll take nice it. Nice par. For birdie, for all the marbles. Oh, close, close. Misread it. It was a, it was a good, good speed. You've got the speed yeah, down. Yeah, the speed was okay. Now you're ready for your tournament this afternoon. Kygo, it was an absolute pleasure. Nice I will. To meet you. I'll see you at Ultra. Maybe I'll open for you next year. hundred percent. Okay, sounds Just good. Get, Just get, get the hand the, movement yeah, in. Yeah, hand movement. Here we yeah. go. <laughs>